cinders. You shall go to the ball. Every bride dreams of the perfect wedding day. Princess Day. Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> but some <laughs> take it to extremes. <sighs> Meet the brides who will stop at nothing to get what they want. If I can't find the perfect dress, there just won't be a wedding. Too, too skirt. No, very. No matter what it takes. It looks lovely. I look like a £10 hugger. Or what it costs. I don't actually know how much we've spent. Oh, but you know, you just feel like you're doing so much stuff and, like, trying to hold everything together. And heaven help anyone who gets in the way. That bridesmaid is no longer coming to my wedding. Don't drink anymore. Don't drink, drink anymore. Yeah. I'm going to be sick. You have got my rings, haven't you? I've got a killer. If you were like that at the end of the aisle, I will not walk down it. That bitch needs to die. This week, one bride is determined to get her big day, despite having no cash. If we had to go up to 500, we would. Is that in total? Yes. OK. <laughs> and another bride is getting two weddings and anything else her heart desires. I like things a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yellow gold only. I only wear yellow gold. Right. That's why everything has to go perfectly. In Paul, Dorset, 21-year-old Holly Fryer is fully focused on her dream wedding. Her lucky co-pilot is 22-year-old Dean. I love you. I love you more. I love you times infinite, what you say. Holly wants a fairy tale wedding, but convincing Dean to want it too is proving tricky. <laughs> Foot down properly. Despite Dean dragging his feet, cash-strapped Holly is going to get what she wants, regardless. It's so pretty. Quite like that one. Yeah. But with only £2,000 to spend, Holly needs a plan, which means asking family and friends to pitch in, like Mum Nikki. She doesn't have paddies, but she can, uh, you know, throw a bit of a temper tantrum if she doesn't get what she wants. I've tried on about 40 dresses. What sort of style gown is it you're actually looking for at the moment? Massive, blingy, princessy. Cinderella -y. You want to be a princess bride? Pretty much. Okie dokie. <laughs> if I had a limited amount of money, I would hire probably a castle, a carriage, Cinderella dress, everything <laughs> about Cinderella, apart from the glass slippers, because they'd probably hurt a little bit. She may not have much money, but she's not going to let that spoil things. So that one's pretty too. For Holly, the big day can't come soon enough. Cinders, you shall go to the ball. In their early teens, Holly and Dean were both in the army cadets when eyes locked. For the last seven years, their relationship has been on and off, but Dean finally decided to propose almost a year ago. I would describe us as childhood sweethearts. He's my soulmate, he's my rock, my everything. My family are excited about the wedding. My mum did say we should wait, but I don't want to wait. I want to marry him, and I want to do it as soon as possible. <laughs> Stand up. I definitely have taken the lead in the wedding. Dean hasn't really had a say. <laughs> so I'll go 35. I've done most of the decisions. 20. She has really done all the planning. Done. I just go along with it, so as long as she's happy, I'm happy. Stop it. Holly has a two-year-old daughter, Ariana, from another relationship, which has given her invaluable experience in dealing with children. What colour's my shoes? Well, your shoes are going to be black. Having Dean is like having two children. He is quite childish. Yes, I do agree. <laughs> First, Holly needs to find a reception venue. But with her £2,000 needing to cover dress, food, cars, flowers and a cake, her choices are limited. First stop, her local community centre. How many people can you get in here? Um, about 150 to 180. More than enough. enough, yeah. How much is it to hire? I would say it would cost you £100. £30 deposit, £30. returnable, yes. Oh, that's brilliant. This is actually perfect. Are you available on the 8th of October, Saturday? No. No. Oh. We're not. We've got a um, meatloaf tribute band on that oh. night. Meatloaf's been booked for quite yeah. a while. And... That yeah. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tom Ellis and Aisha Aziz met seven years ago when Tom was already in the Marines. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> and Aisha was still in sick form. As soon as I decided that I liked him, I was not going to let him go. This was going to be my boyfriend. Okay. Mm. I mean, I do try to put my foot down around her, but she's, uh, she's a difficult one. Apart from Tom, Aisha's main interest is herself. Basically, I can't talk to her when she's doing her makeup. I can't talk to her when she's getting ready. That, that's Aisha. <laughs> I like things a certain way, and he would question it. He'd be like, oh, I didn't know we were doing this. That's when the diva moments come out. She runs the show. Uh, <laughs> but I love it. Aisha's obsessed with being in cover girl condition for her big day, giving Tom his only chance to be in charge of something. Concentrate. You're good. You're good. I don't do exercise for vanity, vanity. really. Yeah. I just do it because I like to maintain a high level of fitness. I'm the opposite. Mm. I'm about vanity, the gains. About four or five months ago is when I really started getting into training, you know, mm. training hard. And, you know, it was all about making my bum bigger and my waist smaller. And I've seen the difference. And, you know, it, you know, when it came to the dress fittings and with my seamstress, I was like, make sure it's ridiculously tight. I want to show off my figure. I've worked hard for it. This social media addict is also a daddy's girl. I really care about making my dad proud. I know that he would do anything for me. Which is handy, because he's paying for everything. These, I think, are too small. Daddy, what do you think? <laughs> and Aisha's persuaded Daddy that she needs not one, but two weddings. To me, the fairy tale wedding is the first one, which is the English one. The next one is an Indian wedding reception. It will be very different, so I'm looking forward to it. But where does that leave fiancé Tom? He's definitely better at some things. The stuff that needs muscles. Yeah, that's true. I'm better at the stuff that needs brains. <laughs> <laughs> Aisha was given a choice, £30,000 plus to spend on either her weddings or refurbishing their house. For Aisha, there was no contest. They chose to spend quite a lot on the wedding. Um, they could have clearly spent less on the wedding and had a lot more on the house, but um, the budget for the wedding will be tens of thousands. So while Tom tries to follow some IKEA instructions... Aisha gets a chance to deal with a, like, major issue, her hair. How are you wearing it on your wedding day? I'm having it half up, half down, so and it's curled. I really like having the blonde, brondy kind of hair, but Tom wants to marry me natural, so that's why I'm compromising with this one. Um, but everything else is obviously on my terms. <laughs> a lot of my friends look up to us yeah. because we're not fake, and I think that's why people like us. They know it's genuine. Yeah. We're just real. Goodbye, blondes. We're not all arrogant about our relationship. For um, example, I'm, like, addicted to social media, but I don't actually post about Tom 24-7. I post myself 24-7, but I love a selfie. I'm just taking a Snapchat. And I think I remember saying to him, if we're not engaged by 2016, then I'm gone. It was just a, a daily hammering from, no. from Aisha. I made him feel that I wasn't going to wait around. He proposed to me when my nails were not perfect. They weren't terrible but he literally caught me off guard. In my head, ideally, I would have wanted to be engaged when I looked, you know, perfect, you know? And, and you know, I was wearing Ugg boots. Back in pool, Holly's been told her first choice reception venue has been pre-booked by someone called Meatloaf, but she can't afford more than a few hundred pounds. Will it be second time lucky at her next choice? Hiya. 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 I'm Bobby. I'm looking for a venue for my reception. All right, yeah, and the date? 8th of October. Yeah, it's free. I'm it looks good, isn't it? That's this good. is a hall. As you can yes. see, the chairs are all stacked around the side. If you're having a disco, yeah. they normally go up yeah. on the stage yeah. beyond the curtains there. That's the bar, and they have a member of staff in there to, to serve your, yourselves. Well, the cost for that, um, for the hall and, and the bar and everything, is £175. Yeah. Pound. Okay. It's not too bad, is it? I would have liked the other place, but obviously I couldn't get that then. I would have chosen this anyway, so this is definitely the one. The hall is available and the price is right. But Holly still has a lot to get sorted and pay for. Got a suit to get, rings, rings. caterer, and pretty much sorted my flowers, haven't we? Yes. 
Despite his best efforts, Holly's fiancé Dean frequently drives her crazy. And with their wedding fast approaching, he's still dragging his feet. So I say to him, it's our wedding, it's your wedding too, but you're not involving your opinion. Yeah. You're not, it, like, input in anything. Whatever, babe, whatever. Yeah. He needs to, like, involve himself more because it's annoying me that I'm the one making the decisions. But perhaps Holly has underestimated her rock. He's had an idea. She doesn't know that I'm booking transport at the moment. I would like some sort of classic car, Rolls Royce or anything classical, really. Hello. I think she'd love that. I'm looking for a Rolls Royce yeah. for my wedding day. OK, when is the wedding? Uh, 8th of October. OK. Pick up the bride, take her to the church. Uh, yes. And then church to reception. Yeah. So which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to pick from, really. I like both of them. <laughs> a four-hour wedding is usually £385 in this car and 420 in this car. I'm going to accept this one. You like this car? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to bring um, your girlfriend round to see the car or not, or is it a surprise? I think I'll leave it as a surprise oh, yeah, yeah, for the yeah. time being. <laughs> if Dean books the car, that won't leave much money in Holly's budget. So how will she feed 200 guests? Saturday the 8th of October. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not here. I'm away for that weekend. I think I've called about five, six. Caterers. So, yeah, I'm feeling a little tiny bit worried now, but don't tell my mum. <laughs> Holly's budget is hopelessly small, but she's adamant she's going to have a feast fit for a princess. She and mum Nikki are praying that Julia may have a solution. Whoa. <laughs> Kitchen's massive. <laughs> it's huge, isn't it? Okay. It is. So um, I've got 120 guests. Is that a sort of definite? Is a maximum, minimum? Is that what um, is Well, there's about 200 coming, so we thought if we cater for about wow. 120. What are you looking at, sort of per head or overall? What was it? 360, 380. But if we had to go up to 500, we would. But we're trying to stay away from. Is that pounds that in total? Yes. For everything. Yes. Okay. Don't look at me. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll go get you some bits and pieces to taste. These are just a few little bits and pieces. We've just got different, different sandwich fillings here. Sausage rolls, but I put apple in them. A bit of chicken tikka and some smoked salmon. These egg sandwiches are really nice. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we do other things. So we do, like, things to bulk up your table as well. We can do, like, crudité, so batons of carrots and lots of different dips with celery and tortilla chips. We could do, you know, bowls of crisps. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. What's on them? Um, so that's um, pesto and uh, mascarpone and tomato, and that's hummus and red pepper. Obviously, I can do whatever you like, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I will have to email you um, in terms of the pricing, because it is, and I really don't mean to be rude, but it is quite a tight, the amount of people that you're having. The afternoon tea, for example, for 100 people would be about £13 a head. For our, our finger buffets, we could do something about the same. I know you're on a tight budget. When I was thinking, to be perfectly honest, around the £10 mark for 120 people. So I'm not going to be your cheapest caterer, to be perfectly honest. Holly wants to feed 120 guests with only £4 a head to spend. Even Julia's lowest prices are two and a half times more than Holly's budget. At this rate, she and Mum Nikki may be making the sandwiches themselves. We've already cut the price on rings because we're going to get cheap rings and then save up for our actual rings. But her food is, <laughs> is lovely. South London social media junkie Aisha Aziz will be getting not one but two lavish weddings, thanks to the bank of mum and dad. There is no budget and she's worth every penny. How's that? Oh! <laughs> Aisha's first having a full English white wedding with all the trimmings. The second, an Indian one. With all the trimmings. And Aisha isn't planning to shortchange herself on anything. These are my wedding shoes. From what I can remember, they cost just under £500. My bridesmaids will tell you that I wanted to say I do in Jimmy Choo. I absolutely love them. Footwear sorted, but Aisha's just getting started. I'm really interested in pearls, so... Yep, yeah, yeah, we do pearls with gold and we do pearls with silver. So we yellow do... gold only, I only wear yellow gold. Right, OK. For Tom, it's been a long process to convince Aisha's father that he can be trusted with his little princess. What do you say? Her father, he was very kind of distant with me at the beginning. I realised over time that 
if I was in his position, I'd be exactly the same. Well, I turned 17 two weeks after we met, yeah. and Tom was 20. Private school educated girl, bringing home his boyfriend who's a Marine, you know, and he'd just been to war. You know, you were a man, and I was still in sixth form. Yeah. Aisha's first wedding won't be coming cheap. Her daddy's been told he can expect to shell out at least £20,000. Are these the only cars you have? Or... Yep. Yeah, these I think are too small. Daddy, what do you think? How much on? Yeah, it was, it was very difficult at the beginning. He always helped me, though. That's the weird thing. He was the, the most kindest, helpful man, but there was no relationship. £90. Pounds. That's actually a bargain, isn't it, there? Like, it's... And then, about four years, and he'd seen the fact that she just had so, had so much love for me. He saw how important I was to her. Meanwhile, in Bromley, Aisha's making her views on Tom's planned stag night nice and crystal clear. What time are you meant to be at the venue, Josh? Half past ten. Correct. Next question. Are you, are you looking after the rings? Yeah, check. Tom and Josh have been friends for years. Obviously, he's in the military, so I'm sure he'll be on time. I just don't know whether they'll be sober and on time. OK, but the photographer is coming at 10.30, guys. Have you got a checklist? Can you please put a, have a checklist for Tom? Make sure you've got all the little details. Collar, bars, um, Tom, uh, you're looking at me. I don't think you're going to get there at 9 o'clock. It's all under control. Stop flapping. Yeah. Jeez, man. I don't know if there's that many elements of it, to be honest. There are a lot of elements. Who's this? There's not that many elements to a wedding. Turn oh. up, get Tom there, check, done. Got the rings, done. Oh, to do? No tattoos. <laughs> No pen on bodies. Why, why do you think Because I know what happens in stag dues. Do okay. not let Brev get too drunk. What is going on? <laughs> What's that? It's past 10 o'clock, isn't it? Brev, is that a joke? Brev is a great guy, but, you know, you give him some alcohol and he can go a bit crazy. 8.54? Yeah. It's 5 It's 5 tonight. o'clock somewhere. I was thinking, get, get rid of these, they're a bit bushy. Yeah. Just nothing off the top there. above the neck. Yeah. You're not cutting his hair, Brev. I'm not totally sure what's going to happen, but I've got a couple of Marines in control of my stag do, so it's going to be pretty crazy. I'm a bit worried about them, what they're going to get up to, but the worst that could happen to Tom is if he comes to the wedding drunk. I just think three Marines together, that's not a good idea. Holly couldn't afford the £1,000 wedding dress she really wanted and has had to settle for a cheaper one. But will it impress her one woman judge and jury, best friend Siobhan? Holly knows I'm close enough to say to her what I'm really feeling, so I don't know whether or not she'll hate me if I'm being brutally honest, but hopefully not. I'm not joking, that's gorgeous. <laughs> Don't cry because you'll set me off. So I wasn't expecting that. I was <laughs> expecting something really, really like glitzy and like. I think once that's tighter, it's just gonna it's gonna fit you amazingly, like a, like fit you like a glove. I am on a diet, but I just can't lose the weight. It just won't come off. I'm gaining weight <laughs> more than losing it. It cost me six hundred pound. So that's not bad. I've seen more expensive. Yes, so have I. <laughs> I that's not bad. Holly's choice of dress has left a little cash over for a proper princessy treat too. That's your offer. Oh. See, with that, you don't need a belt because that that's got enough sparkle and like glamour to it. I think with that, even with the veil, when you have a veil on, you don't need anything else. The height of the tiara is. 10 centimetres, I think. Anyone who knows me knows I look the bigger the better, isn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I think if the rest of us walk down the aisle naked, at least you look amazing, so. I'm going to have a nightmare about that now. Bridesmaids walking down the aisle naked. Hmm, let's not dwell on that. But will Siobhan fare any better? I'm nervous about my bridesmaid dress. Um, just because when we got it, it didn't fit right. Um, and they told me to lose a bit of weight, but I've lost it in all the wrong places. I've lost weight around my stomach, but I haven't around my boobs or my bum. So they don't fit. Oh, it's a bit of a concern. Just hold the dress for you. It doesn't fit at all around my boobs. Because if you look, 
Could you not cut your boobs off? I, can't <laughs> I could try. How they can, because I don't want to like, I don't want to upset you or annoy you because of it. Like Siobhan's dress, the budget for this wedding is very tight. Holly now just has £700 left and still hasn't sorted the food. It is a bit of a worry for me. It does all add up. String bit of... <laughs> no. <laughs> you just feel my boobs going. <laughs> Holly's cash crisis is starting to get her down. She'd hoped to walk up the aisle in style behind six bridesmaids and one page boy. Ah, oh, look at you. You look like a princess. To save money, Holly has persuaded her nan to make their dresses. I like it. My grandma did an amazing job, didn't she? But will it save her enough to pay for everything else? <laughs> Meanwhile, in South London, it's the day before Aisha's wedding. And Tom is risking his entire future by starting his stag do in daylight. I've just seen your car. <laughs> oh! Board games. Board games. I mean, th this is a man's sport. We're going into London in like an hour, and we're probably not going to get back until early doors. We've got a phrase in the Marines. It's called sun uppers. It's where you just booze until the sun comes up. And I think now the juices are flowing. Sun uppers is seeming like the, the best idea for us at the moment. If we booze, <laughs> and, if we booze <laughs> until that sun comes up, yeah, we'll be sweet, because at least we'll be on time one way or the other. It's not a big stag do, but it's people I trust. And these people stand by my side. <laughs> but what's good for the gander must surely be good for the goose. Aisha and her bridesmaids have decamped to tomorrow's wedding venue in Chelmsford, Essex. Just in time for a little drinky poo. Well, it's time tomorrow, you're going to be married. Fine, yeah. let's taste yeah. to that. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Guys, I have something little for you oh. all. Oh. Oh, yes. OK, guys, you have to wear these tonight. Oh, oh. 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 my god. Oh. Oh. I love you guys. <laughs> She is quite particular, you know, she's been very particular about the shoes. Um, she wanted us to have, like, a lower heel so that we weren't going to be too high because she's, you know, a little bit shorter. Oh, my God! <laughs> and, like, colours and nails and everything. She's OCD a little bit, but in a really good way. Can I take, a, like, a snap of you guys? OK. You know, I want you all standing up first. You have to stand up, sorry. I'm really annoying. Desi, can you go more towards them? Yeah, cool. Perfect. Like, she wants everything to be perfect, but, like, she's not bossy, I don't I mean, she can seem like it, but she's actually not. Yes, yes boss. Yes, boss. OK, yes. all right, start handing your lips. OK. Aisha is a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> You'll definitely notice in the wedding that everything is perfect down to the tea. I want to see bridesmaids. Get your okay. boobies out. Oh my god, that's so cute. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I knew her when she was single before she met Tom. I was actually there the night that she met him, and she was really nervous. I um, mean, you don't see her nervous very often, but it was an immediate attraction. To see them together is something really magical. They have a very, very unique relationship. Snapchat addict Aisha is keeping track of her man's movements, even on his stag night. But if she thinks it'll give her peace of mind, think again. Aisha, <laughs> you've got a message from Tom. <gasps> oh my god, let's see. When was, it's when a was Snapchat. The last time you had... Oh, it's just. Oh, they're going into London. Now? Or that no. Tom? No. It's... That's Brev. He's drunk. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. oh. Going into London. It's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay, that's not normally late for us, but I mean, when it's your wedding the next day. I think the boys are being a bit mental having the stag the night before the wedding. But I'm sure Tom will be on his best behaviour. He'll have to be. So. It's crazy. Why are they having a stag do the night before the wedding? That's what you see in the movies. I, do you know what? I just can't. I, I don't even want to think of what he could be doing. So, say he gets to where he wants to be at, like, quarter to ten. Even if you only stays for two hours. He won't only stay for two hours, let's be honest. But even if you only stay for two hours. I have hours, a feeling they have a late like night. midnight, and then imagine, then you've got to get home. How long does it take to get here from London? I don't know. By now, they're probably quite tipsy, drunk. I trust him. Um, yeah, he's just better turn up on time. It's only 24 hours until Holly Fryer and Dean Marshall say, I do. But 
Dean's already in the doghouse. I'm going to kill him. He's opened my bargain makeup bag. Where's my tablet? Dean moves stuff without telling me and then forgets where he puts things. Why can't men ever leave anything alone? Like, is it impossible? I need a drink. That is what I need. While Holly goes in search of the stolly, Mum Nikki gamely trudges on. And fortune teller Madonna prepares to gaze into the future. But will Holly like what she hears? Right, if you shuffle them, let's see what they say. <clears throat> Your future husband, as you can see, the card is upside down. He just doesn't know what, what he's doing. He doesn't know if he's coming or going. He needs a push. The first thing he needs to do is to find a job. You need to be well in charge tomorrow because um, it, it, it's going to be a little bit, uh, you know, a few week ups here and there. Again, he's not here, so you really need to um, take control of it. So tomorrow, I don't think you're gonna rest. <laughs> this is you, the steering wheel. It's your, um, um, like, your life, where you're gonna steal, steer it. Because what I keep seeing is that he's not gonna be like, as supportive as he should be. The cards have spoken. Holly must take charge tomorrow and probably every other day thereafter. All that remains is for her Prince Charming to wish his princess good night. See you tomorrow. Bye, don't be late. I ain't gonna be late. Oh, Fucking hell. But uh, if he's late, I'm pretty sure my mum would chop his bollocks off. <laughs>《Long, long last, it's Aisha and Tom's wedding day. Hair, makeup, nails, so much to do. But Aisha's groom is nowhere to be seen. Do you know I had Snapchats from them at like three in the morning? I wasn't awake though. I woke up this morning and I could see videos and Snapchats of them. Aisha, we missed the train. We're in London. The next train's not till half past five. We don't get into Charles until six. I felt all nighter. Brem felt all nighter. Strip club bed. Party. Sorry, we fucked up. He texted me that they're barely alive. Really? Yeah, before. You didn't tell me that, or did you? Yeah, I did. Oh, I think but I, I think it was. A joke. I think like my... it's like we're all alive, dot dot dot, barely. But with just an hour to go and without a care in the world. Tom appears with his eyebrows and his best man, but no sign of Brev. Brev did not do well last night. No. <laughs> He's lost his credit card, phone, driving licence. And then we ended up in Shoreditch and bust out some moves and got sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. Just, yeah, uh, we're, we're sobered up now. Yeah. We're a beautiful day, An absolutely beautiful day. OK, let's, let's round it up. Let's go find some people, get the room, and let's get changed. Start meeting people. The best man, Josh, is here, but that doesn't mean Aisha can stop fretting. Oh, God, Josh has got the rings, hasn't he? I hope. Best man. I can't believe Tom's here. Is, does Tom look... Is he looking sober? I don't know, I see oh, you. <laughs> but serving in Afghanistan has taught Tom to remain calm under fire, which is lucky, cos today he's going to need it, like Brev arriving with <sighs> moments to spare. Yeah, well, yeah, I survived just about. Uh, a couple of beers to me over this morning, it was all right. Hey, we're here, you know what I mean? It's OK. Things are, things are running sharpishly, yeah. slightly blunt, but it's all right. It's a long-standing tradition for the groom to give his bride a wedding gift. Tom's given it his best shot, but will Aisha approve? So apparently I've got to give a gift to the bride on the day, and this is what I've come up with. It's basically a 24-carat gold rose. Each rose is unique because it was an actual rose and it was just plonked into the old gold there. Lovely, isn't it? So, yeah, hopefully uh, the best man will be able to deliver that soon to my bride. I would close that a little bit. There's a crack yeah. in the door. Who's that? Who is that? It's your mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're just seeing it, What is this? So, this oh is... Oh, my God, I'm really scared. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm really scared. Shaking. So Tom hand picks that rose and he's had it coated in 24 karat gold. Oh, so nice. Oh. So nice. And it's gold. I love gold. Give him a kiss. Do you want me to kiss him through you? Yeah. <laughs> and then she just told me to give you a kiss from her. Yeah, so I'll do what she said. So definitely. What's going on, huh? Great! Yeah. Nah, she's, yeah, she just said, uh, say bye. Yeah, there we go. I'll always kiss him, you know, I'm not scared.
I mean, I thought. Uh, hey. Where's mine then? Perfect. Guys, what time is it? I'm going to end up being a bit late. Sure, like, it's also the morning of Holly and Dean's big day. Everything's finally under control and the bride is enjoying a well-deserved amuse-bouche. Mackie D's! <laughs> this is my breakfast. My sister-in-law got it for me. It's a sausage and egg muffin. But the wedding day glow is short-lived. Cue Ariana. What have you done? She's got glitter all over the floor. Spooky, I'm having a fucking breakdown. It's hectic, stressful. It's a madhouse this morning. Can't wait until my mum fucking gets back. The time is... How can you know? Half ten, nearly. Oh, my God. I've got to do Holly's hair, her makeup. I've got to do my hair, my makeup. I've got to help the little girls with their makeup. So I hope he appreciates it, because if not, I will backhand him if he goes, oh. Then I'll just. I'll be like that. I'll be like that. Speaking of the groom, no doubt fearing for his life, he's actually early. Very early. I felt tired this morning. <laughs> Didn't want to get up. But not at half past seven with a phone call. <laughs> it was Holly that rang me saying, wakey, wakey, time to get up. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> With Dean sorted, someone else has had enough. Sit down. No. Are we on, please? <gasps> Look. Mommy. No. Don't you dare. No. <laughs> After squeezing into her dress, Holly now just needs to get to the registry office. He better be there. Sadly, Dean's efforts in the car department came to naught. We were originally going to go with the Rolls Royces that he found, but they rung up um, saying they needed obviously six weeks in advance for deposit, so we couldn't afford it. And then my mum arranged the cars. So now instead of a Rolls Royce, I'm going in a Mercedes. Dean had promised Holly a Rolls Royce with seven seats. Sadly, what she gets is a borrowed car with just two doors. Yep, no, I'm stuck. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm Rachel. I'll take that hand. Hi. Hello. Um, just got to do the OK, right. Dean's upstairs. Yes, that's fine. He's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> just making okay, sure I need some Peter around somewhere. Peter, I need Peter. You. Yeah, you're Peter. You have got my rings, haven't you? 21-year-old Holly and 22-year-old Dean are finally tying the knot. All the ladies squeezed into their dresses, Dean is present and correct, and the work experience best man has the rings. Ladies and gentlemen, please be outstanding to welcome the bridal party. Holly's father pitched in to get Holly's dress sorted and today proudly walks his daughter down the aisle while Holly is rewarded with a wedding costing, amazingly, just £2,000. My name is Rachel and I have the pleasure of conducting the ceremony and guiding Dean and Holly through their vows. This is a unique day for Dean and Holly. So, Dean, do you take Holly here present to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Will you love and respect him, be honest with him and stand by him through whatever may come? I will. Pop it on the end there, with that very trembly hand. That's lovely. Take a seat there. Why are you hanging it off my nail? You hold it on there. That's, That's what she said. Very trendy. That's lovely. Just push it. Push it. <laughs> 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 
I don't think that's coming up in the hurry, is it? No. <laughs> so now it is my very, very great pleasure and privilege to pronounce you husband and wife. You may be sure. <laughs> Meanwhile, 170 miles away, although it could easily be a million, 16th century Lees Priory in Chelmsford is playing host to a picture book occasion. The wedding of Thomas, Richard Ellis and Aisha Aziz and 70 of their closest friends and family. Welcome to the marriage of Tom and Aisha. I, Thomas Richard Ellis. I, Thomas Richard Ellis. Take you, Aisha Aziz. Take you, Aisha Aziz. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. To honour you. To honour you. And to respect you. And to respect you. Aisha, I give you this ring. Aisha, I give you this ring. As a symbol of our marriage. As a symbol of our marriage. And that means that you have become husband and wife. Congratulations. It's been great. A uh, wonderful day. Yeah, everything's gone perfectly. For me, it, it don't change nothing. It don't change nothing. He's, he, he's on lockdown now, isn't he? So that, that might be an issue. Oh my god, it's, it's, it's been absolutely incredible. Literally, it's like being perfect. Yeah, it's just perfect. Literally, everything's perfect. You, you come to these weddings and you see people happy and married going into it and you start thinking about all the relationships you've messed up yourself. Maybe I need to calm it down. But the day is barely over and Aisha's already thinking about wedding number two. The Indian wedding uh, reception that we're having, it'll be completely different. I get a chance to dress up in some traditional, like, Asian clothes. So that's gonna be yeah, so, you know, I get another bridal outfit, you know, hair and makeup all over again. It's exciting, it'll be completely different. Yeah, Despite having just £2,000 to spend, Holly's made it to the finishing line and Cinderella has the wedding she dreamed of. Mum Nikki's determined that her new son-in-law also has a day to remember. I don't know if you remember your comment about what <laughs> wedding cake you would like. <laughs> For all those who don't know, Dean wanted a dildo wedding cake, so he got one. He had his own brooms cake. I <laughs> didn't really. There you go, my darling. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Enjoy. We did it. I love you. I love you too. Months of planning, and now you're actually married. It's just, yeah. it doesn't feel real yet. You didn't even look up the aisle. I weren't allowed. Why? Because she said. I was like, can I turn around? And she was like, nope. You wait till she gets here. <laughs> I was like, OK. Are you being serious? Yeah. That bitch needs to die. <laughs> Charming. Be afraid, Dean. Be very afraid. Meanwhile, with one wedding down, Aisha has got her second wind. And that means, thank goodness, it's time to think about what to wear again. I've gone with red and gold, and there's so many details to, to literally everything. This came, and I've got a 23-inch waist, and it was 27 inches. My dad was like, it's absolutely fine, you don't need to have it too tight. But I was like, no, I want it perfect. I want it to fit perfectly around me. So I've had this taken in. This is all gold-plated. And when it came to buying it, because it got really expensive, my dad called my mum and said, you know, it's coming up to this much. Um, you know, is that okay? My mum was like, if it looks good, just get it. So this is for each arm. And you would not think that that is expensive, but I mean, one of them can be about 25 pounds. You know, it just adds up and that's one arm. I was actually going to have more on one arm, but I felt like it would make my arm look a bit small. So yeah, I'm gonna be very opulent. If you compare this to the outfit for the English wedding, it's very different. And that's what's exciting about it. A few weeks ago, Aisha was the undisputed belle of the ball at her and Tom's first wedding. Today, the emphasis is meant to be on Tom being embraced by his new family. Tom, sit down there, baby. Yes, 
Can I? Yes, sit there. You can watch. Aisha is only half Bengali, but it's enough of an excuse for a full-blown Indian wedding. And Tom will need to look the part. So I see Tom in his Indian outfit, all dressed up, and he looks amazing. He looks like my Aladdin. And I'm his Princess Jasmine. Second time around, and Tom is finally about to get his turn in the spotlight. Nice and high. I have to, I have to adjust. Yeah. A bit of straight leg and then a bit of crumple at the bottom. And I think that's what I'm achieving right now. It's almost like all the parties kind of up top, like very relaxed mm -hmm. bottoms, and then the top is kind of a straight finish. Yeah. And the bling. Oh my gosh. I've left everything last minute, Tom. I need scissors. Yeah. scissors. Don't panic. Calm down. Oh my god, I feel like I need cream. Oh. No, you don't. I've lost my cool already. <laughs> but no matter how good Tom looks in his MC hammer pants, it's not long before the spotlight is back where it belongs. I definitely don't recognise myself. I look like an Indian bride, which I am right now. It's really weird. I don't know if I want to post too much. Like, it's like a surprise, but really I should. Oh, it's so heavy, literally. This is so different to... The other one, the the skirt is so, so heavy for me. Yes. Fuck, we're late. Barely a week since their first fairy tale wedding, it's time for Aladdin and his Princess Jasmine to perform in the sequel. Only this time, there'll be no alcohol to fuel the festivities. Uh, she looks a million dollars um, pretty much in. Uh, I'd say to people she could look a million dollars in a bin bag, but um, uh, she looks even, even better uh, at the moment. She's stunning. For Tom, it's a big deal. Like, he's meeting, you know, so many new people. I know pretty much everyone at this uh, wedding reception. Um, but for Tom, he's meeting a lot of my extended family and, you know, my parents' friends. And, yeah, just, you know, I'm, I can imagine it must be really overwhelming for him. Tom appears to have passed the audition with all Aisha's aunties and uncles. But what about the only judge who really matters? It's always um, difficult for a father uh, to face that, that moment, I guess, but um, it's a lot easier when you know that your son-in-law is a really decent, um, lovely guy. Aisha was given a choice by her father, a £30,000 budget towards two weddings or some household refurbishments. Aisha decided the weddings got the bulk of the bread. But can she still have her wedding cake and eat it? And I'm still helping with the house as well, so... But not as much as I would have been um, if she hadn't had the wedding that she's had. But now that Tom is a paid-up family man, is he ready for the long run? The future, oh, it's going to be typical, isn't it? Babies. That's no, we're that's, not. That's, that's I don't think we're going to have babies. Everyone no. wants to hear that we're going to have a babies next, and children will come when it's the right time. Just like we waited, you know, and we got engaged at the right time, the children will come at the right time. <laughs>